Hello, I'm Matt from Ludovox.fr, and today we are on the Simon booth with Eric Lang and Antoine Boza. Hi, guys. Bonjour. Salut. So uh, you have finally, eventually, uh, come up with a copy, a, a pre-production sample of Victorian Masterminds. So uh, congratulations. This has been long, right? Thank you. Yep, it's four years in the making. I'm very excited. Yeah, at last. We, we got it. We can touch it. So uh, what is the game about for all of those who might have forgotten what the game is about? Uh, so uh, I practice this pitch very often. Um, picture it. It's uh, Victorian, uh, Victorian era, gaslight, steampunk, and um, mustache twirling cartoon villains. They're uh, deadly machines spreading mayhem and uh, spreading mayhem across five different cities to build their machines, capture buildings, kidnap scientists, and uh, finish evil, evil missions uh, for points because it's a family game. So Antoine, do you have anything to add about the theme? You want me to add in French or in English? <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, no, but the theme, yeah, I got, you got all, all covered. So yeah, it's, it's one of my favorite theme, you know, steampunk gaslight uh, Europe. So yeah, I'm very happy. Uh, at last, uh, we could make a game in this year, year, this sim. What about the mechanics then? Uh, I see those poker chips here, which have that, a cog shape. So the game is played two to four players, and uh, each get uh, the, the same five uh, tokens, which are the your minions, we can say. The agents. Yeah, yeah. Agents. Agents. My English is not so good. So, so uh, the game is really, really simple. The flow of the game is really simple. See, on my turn, I will take a look at my top top token and I will put it face face down on one uh, one spot okay and it's it's all you do on your turn so yeah you look and you choose to put to put it in on the game and and when there are three tokens of any color on one on one uh, one city we swap the, the pile and we resolve and we go on uh, just like, like uh, for all the games so the you know the, the, the turn is really really simple which is something I really like. You have one thing to do with choices, but just one thing to do. So you do, you just do uh, this this uh, very very simple turn until the, the end of the game. So uh, when we resolve the tokens, what happens? So that yeah, that's where the complexity of the game is, right? So um, for example, I mean there are so if these three. Each uh, player has the same five agents, each with their special power. You're going to do two things with each agent. You are going to steal the resource of that city as well as use your special power. So for example, if I'm over here in uh, London, I know I'm going to be stealing a part in order to finish my machine, no matter what your ability. In addition, so this guy, uh, this, is the, this is the gunner. He will do that like all agents do, but in addition, the gunner will try to destroy a building. <clears throat> I mean, sorry, capture a building in that space only if you have enough firepower. Um, and the game is interesting like that everything is um, tied together. You need firepower in order to destroy buildings. You need parts to finish your machine. Your machine gives you firepower. You can get pieces of the codex to put into your library to give you points and also unlock your superpower of choosing your agent instead of getting it randomly. Um, so there's a chain of, there's a chain of uh, complexity that comes just from that very simple mechanic. So what was the, the idea behind uh, Victorian Masterminds? Was it the theme uh, at the beginning or was it the mechanic of the tokens? Absolutely the theme. Absolutely the theme, yeah. yeah. We are both theme fans, I think. So yeah, we talk a lot. The, the, the starting point was, I want to make, as Eric, I want to make a Victorian steampunk game. So he said, yeah, that's a great theme, let's do that. And uh, we had many versions of the prototypes with different mechanism but yeah we we start with the theme and we want it we are sure we want to keep the theme all the way uh, all the way down to the the process i actually remember exactly at gen con um we were just telling each other stories we knew we wanted to work on a game together we just told each other stories and it was antoine who told me the story about oh sherlock holmes is missing what if you play the bad guys i'm like yes that sounds excellent yeah. and it started we threw in I thought like, oh, but big machines that you like, you have to build, and they have special powers and they just came together. So by the way, how do you build your machine in this game? 
Uh, so there are two kinds of uh, resources. Uh, they are, uh, I don't know the, 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 the word in English, parts. so it's parts, using parts, and, and, uh, and cogs. Cogs, oh yeah, cogs. My English is so bad. So you need both of them. Uh, you can get one in uh, one of the city and the other at the end. At the end, yeah, okay, it's far away from there. <laughs> uh, so you, when you get the part, you can choose which part of your uh, machine you want to build first. So there are choices here: Do I want to get firepower? Do mm -hmm. I want to get uh, special abilities or points? You have to choose when uh, which part you want to build first. And uh, as you can guess, there is also bonus points if you manage to complete your machine first. Because you can finish the game and win the game without completing it. But of course, you want to, to make something wall, so you, you get bonus points if you manage to, to do, do that. And so one cool thing is when you finish all the parts of your machine, you then get the secret part. Uh, you actually get to take this little puzzle piece and finish your blueprint. And now you have that power. So as you complete it, you're, you will finish out your blueprint. You'll have this cool piece of art that you're finishing, but you also get to continue your power. So in this one, from now on, you will get um, two points for the Da Vinci Codex instead of one whenever you pick it up. Every machine has the same general powers, but they all have also unique powers that are only their own. That's what I was noticing. Some of the powers are a bit asymmetrical. Uh, can you talk about the, the coolest power of the machines? Uh, we will have a different answer, I think. Um, so I personally like, um, please tell me he's here. He's not here. <laughs> I, he's not pictured. I like the steam mole um, because he, uh, his power, so every um, machine has a unique power when the engineer comes up. Uh, the steam mole lets you place your topmost agent under one other agent on the board, right? He's a steam mole. He's coming in and he's uh, bubbling up. I love that. I love the feel of that. And uh, for example, the tarantula allow you to destroy more buildings than usual. So yeah, I'm kind of you know, let's destroy, capture, capture. Oh, sorry, capture, capture. things. Sorry, evil. evil. You're evil, but not you know, not violent. <laughs> We're family game evil. So uh, when is it going to be released? Uh, I think Q1 uh, 2019, right? In English, it will be 2000 uh, Q1 2019. Um, I can't say exactly when. Uh, because it is what it is, but uh, and um, we have many, many language partners that will be coming on after, uh, hopefully a few months afterwards. What about French? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> That's my fault. Uh, I'm the publisher, but we. Uh, I can't tell you yet until I won't tell you until I have a very strong actual number. Um, I I understand. Don't worry. So uh, then, do you have like stories of like what what's the best development story about the game. Did you come up with a specific thing that some other mechanic destroyed or I don't know? Well, I remember we worked on it for about eight months. We worked, I think it was Gen Con, we worked on it till almost longer, a year afterward. We had one version that we brought to, um, to Essen the next year. We played it and we were okay with it. It was fun, it was okay. But then we stopped, we stopped after a while and we were like, oh, I'm a little bit bored. So we threw the entire game away um, and then we started over. And in one night, I remember one night we threw it away, like after we said we throw it away, but we love the theme. We want to keep the theme. And in one night, Antoine came up with the agent thing and then I came up with the, the single uh, machine powers and it just clicked. Like that next prototype was like 24 hours. It was really cool. In the first prototype, there wasn't the machine board, there was small construction cards, so you want to make small machine, and then Eric say, no, we don't want several small machines, we want one big machine. So, just... so yeah, the prototype changed a lot on, on the beginning, yeah. Will there be other Boza Long games? Uh, will you co continue to collaborate together? I mean, um, we're always open, but note, this game took four years, so don't hold your breath. <laughs> It takes a long time. Yeah, he's a busy man. No, he has a lot of work and different cap, and he's a publisher and designer, and uh, I don't know yeah. many things. Anything is possible. Yes. Uh, tout le monde sait, no, tout c'est possible, oui. Very good. Well, thank you, Antoine. Thank you, Eric, for this overview of Victorian Masterminds, and also for your presence here. I know your time is precious, so bye bye, and see you on Ludovox.fr. Are you ready? No. No, you're not ready? No. Okay. Yes.
Okay, you want it in French or in English? Okay. I will try French. Oh, okay, I'm screwed. Uh, Garfield. Yeah? I, I always say... Oh, yes. Vlada, I love you. I love you like a brother, but uh, Richard Garfield. I, I will go with Shvatil, so we, we, we get uh, no problem with boss. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's not fair. I guess cards. Yeah, it's a tough question. I'll go with dice. I love dice. Because they make sounds. Cards don't make sounds. Ah. I love sounds in the game. And I make dice masters too, so oh. I love you guys, but it's cards. Chaos. That was a very straight answer. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> I like both, but yeah. chaos is more fun. Yeah, I like that. So I go with chaos too. Uh, I use green, and I don't remember why. I just always do. I'm so used to green that if somebody else plays it, I will move their piece because it's so part of my DNA. And I don't know why. And I usually play yellow or black. And like you, I can... Uh, I don't know. Just just uh, hold that bit, I, I mean. No, no reason. I don't know anything, see? Oh my god. Um, That's a tough one. Uh, um, oh my god, I'm in Germany too. Sorry, Germany. Uh, I played, I grew up playing a game called Mensch Ärgerlich nicht, and that's from Germany, and it's widely in sale. Sorry, but I didn't like it at all. Uh, <laughs> what, maybe one, one of my first game, <laughs> maybe? Oh, that's a better answer. Yeah? My first game is the worst title. I, I had time to <laughs> think so. Text. Yeah, icons. <laughs> D different culture. <laughs> and it was very clear in this game who wanted to do icons, who wanted to do text. It was perfect. <laughs> That's tough question, wow. too. Wow. Um, I mean... Me personally, I like game stores because I, uh, that's where I go to play and I still I like to support them. Game store because I just want to buy a game and play it right now and not you know one year or two years. or uh, But it's, it's a wrong example <laughs> because no, it's a local store but we, we wait a long time to play it. That's a true fact. <laughs>